The platform that we have built is called the Pensando Distributed Services Platform. And it is this platform that essentially is going to enable us to allow for our customers to deliver in bringing a cloud to our customers' data centers. And for enterprise environments, what, they, what this means is the ability for Pensando to deliver cloud-like agility, security, and the simplification of the architecture within an enterprise environment. At the same time, for our cloud customers, this now will allow us the ability to enable our cloud customers to build a next generation architecture, which will enable them to leapfrog the likes of AWS that have come to rely on internal development technologies. Now, if I were to draw an analogy on how, what the technology is that Pensando is building and enabling for our cloud customers, it is consistent with how and the journey that NVIDIA went on as they were building out an accelerator for graphics, which eventually has become the dominant platform for artificial intelligence and the next set of applications. If I were to look at something even closer to home, it is consistent with what AWS set out to do as they were thinking about building the cloud and in 2016 acquired a company called Annapurna. Annapurna served to become the foundation on top of which all the enhanced capabilities that AWS started to deliver as services to its customers, whether it was enhanced networking functions or the ability to run their own hypervisors within that environment, they continue to drive the pace of innovation by integrating a lot of their value-added service functions directly into this technology, which became the foundation and started to get deployed across bulk of their compute portfolio. This allowed them to build a variety of services and to continue to drive the next set of services, enabling the enterprise customers to take advantage of the cloud and its full potential. By our customers, we are now redeemed to be at least a generation, if not a gen over two generations ahead of this technology. Now, when you take a look at this accelerator and this technology that we have built and start to look at what we are beginning to deploy starting this calendar year across our customers' environments, the foundation of which are the distributed services cards that run at 25 and 100 gig and enable a variety of software services that can be turned on in parallel to one another. We call it the power of the ant whether it is a variety of distributed software-defined networking services, riding alongside with storage services and security capabilities while enabling telemetry to run in parallel. And in the future, an architecture which we continue to innovate every 18 months to two years, allowing us to take advantage of the current uh, state-of-the-art uh, silicon-based technologies, where today's technology is based on 16 nanometer, and the next one will be available over the next 18 months tied to seven nanometer technology. All of the software services that we will be talking about that are available today will also be fully future compatible on these new platforms as they become available. The power of this architecture clearly is that it's fully software defined, it's accelerated at wire rate and providing full visibility and security because those are attributes that are built on into this platform and not an afterthought. Now this architecture clearly is fully software defined. Everything in this architecture and this platform is fully programmable. So making it a future proof architecture. When we talk about software defined elements, those will consist of things including network and network services, security services, and storage services, all of which can be turned on at the same time. Being accelerated at the edge also implies, in addition to being fully programmable, is the ability to consume it at low power. And we, can, we will be looking at how some of the key elements of innovation are allowing us to do that. At the same time, while you want to keep become programmable and be in low power footprints, scale becomes a very important element whether you are trying to scale for large scale enterprises or for cloud customers or for service providers at the edge. 
This architecture is unique in that it treats all workloads, whether virtualized, bare metal, and containers, as first-class citizens. And at the same time, it has built-in security into the architecture while allowing for always-on telemetry. After all, if you can't have visibility and observability, security becomes a very tough thing to go uh, tackle. While at the same time, we have built the ability to be centrally managed with a policy model, which is consistent with that of the cloud providers. A lot of the use cases and the power of this technology is being driven through our partnerships with end user customers, strategic cloud customers, as well as a lot of service providers with whom we are in the midst of trials with. At the same time, the goal is to continue to deliver production worthy products. And when I talk about the use cases at the end, we will go into more details of that. At the foundational level, this technology is powered with our P4 programmable processor. During Francis's section, he's going to talk in more detail about this. Now, this technology, when embedded on a PCIe Express card, can be deployed across all scale out servers and the ability for all of the services to run tied to the end policy models can be enabled across these distributed services cards. As I touched upon earlier, one of the key attributes of this technology is that customers do not need to have the requirement to rely on so complex service stitching architectures. Service stitching is baked into this platform and all functions can be present everywhere at scale simultaneously. Managing all of these assets is available either through a RESTful API where customers that have their own controllers would have the opportunity to, through those RESTful APIs, manage the lifecycle of the distributed services cards. And for enterprise customers and some of our cloud customers, we are also delivering our own policy services manager, which is based on the Kubernetes architecture. When Vipin goes through the demonstration of this technology, you will truly get to appreciate all the attributes of the policy services manager that allow you to deal with the life cycle of the distributed services cards, the full and centralized capabilities of managing the policies and automation and availability of the RESTful APIs that give us the opportunity to work with a broad range of ecosystem partners across the IT or operation orchestration stacks, enabling our enterprise customers to integrate it within their current operational model. In summary, this distributed services platform allows our customers to build a fully software-defined architecture, one that can be accelerated at the edge, and one that is always secure and visible, and also breaking down the silos that today exist within the enterprise environments with the big complex appliances that do not are not required. Sonny, sorry, I have a question. Yes, Enrico. You, you talked about uh, your customer as large enterprises, service providers, and telcos, and I totally get it. But actually, do they have to build their software stack on top using the API that you provide, or do you provide the entire stack, so the storage infrastructure on top of it, the network functionalities ready to go? I mean, it's not that a firewall you know, comes out from uh, uh, whatever it's this, uh, the software vendor for that firewall with, you know, all this uh, offloading, all, all of these things already, right? It's a very good question, Enrico. For our enterprise customers, we are essentially delivering the entire stack. Even for some of our cloud customers, they are not only enabling the functions of what we are delivering to them, but they are integrating it into their current environments. So as an example, for an enterprise customer, they would be deploying the distributed services cards across their enterprise class servers, working alongside with HPE at a strategic level, and also getting the certification working closely with Dell. Enterprise customers would be able to procure and deploy the distributed services cards from their server vendors with the ability to turn on functions that are available by Pensando including functions like stateful firewalls, as well as micro-segmentation features. They would also have the ability to procure and deploy the distributed policy services manager 
either on a virtual machine or as a container that can manage the life cycle of those distributed services cards. Whereas cloud customers would have the opportunity to embrace the distributed services card across the compute infrastructure of their choice. And at the same time, working closely with them, they would be delivering a set of services that are tied to the software that Pensando has provided to them. At the same time, we will be delivering tools to them that will allow them to compile their own business logic that can co-reside with the Pensando software. Through those RESTful APIs, we also tie into their controllers and their operational models. So we have a very flexible way of getting deployed across this broad set of customer base. Did I answer your question, Enrico? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, I, I have another question though. So if you, I totally get if you have a, a, an environment that is you know, already uh, full of your cards. I mean, every server with your cards, but what happens in a, in the moment that you start to deploy in the new cards, so th there is a moment where you have uh, old servers with the traditional uh, uh, network interfaces and new ones, okay? How, how do you manage the transition then? So the way the enterprise customers are managing that is they are doing it at a pod level, the deployment of a self-standing pod. Now, the very key to those customers is the ability for this newly formed pod to coexist and interoperate with the existing infrastructure that they have in place, which is a very important aspect of how we went about developing the RESTful APIs and enabling this product to be integrated into customers' existing ecosystem of, app, of tools that they use. Whether they are, happen to be using Splunk or ServiceNow, we would have through the RESTful APIs have the ability to integrate into their existing environments, okay? And whereas if you are a cloud customer, and you're starting to build your services on top of Pensando, the key element is to have the ability to offer like-to-like -like functions that the customer is deploying today, the cloud provider is delivering today, and the ability to help them migrate towards a fully um, software-defined architecture going forward to their customers that are looking for acceleration of these functions, whether it's at 50 gig speeds or 100 gig speeds. So at a baseline, our services meet the requirements of what the customer's already delivering, what the cloud customer's already delivering. And on top of that, when we start introducing new services, they would be able to roll those out at higher speeds and at more scale, not allowed and enabled by their current suppliers. And we enable them to build a truly software-defined distributed architecture. Uh, the customers that would be interested in this are probably running something like NSX or ACI or VXLAN with eVPN today. Are you integrating seamlessly with any one of those? Our, eco our customers are the ones that define who our ecosystem partners are. All of the customers that you, all of the partners you have named, we clearly have working relationships with and continue to work on a better together, more tightly integrated stack because ultimately the customer is looking for a single pane of management and orchestration layer. And they want to make sure that architecturally what they are building is future proof. And at the same time, it allows them to work with their current vendors of choice. So a quick question from me as well. Um, so say for example, a vendor or um, an organization starts to move or buys into the technology, how easy would it be for them to um, transition to it? Is it just a matter of adding a card and it detects whatever it needs to uh, handle? Um, is it an automated process or do you have to manually transfer all these services that it can handle? It's a very good question, Atha. What we have noticed is that as large enterprises are looking to deploy this technology, the first step for them is to make sure that the certification with the server vendors is already in place something that we have already worked towards and we want to make sure that their server vendor is able to make this technology available shipping out of the server vendor's factory. The second thing that the customer ensures is that when they are automating this technology across their environments, they go through a 60, 90, 120 day process to ensure that their automation tools and uh, their ability to take this technology into the environments has been completely tested. 
So now the barrier to deployment has been overcome by ensuring that whatever tools they have in place, we have the ability to get seamlessly integrated and we run no differently than the way they are currently deploying what they have in place. When the time comes to have the ability to turn on some of these services, you can go about doing that through the centralized policy manager. And through that policy manager is where you would have the ability to deal with all elements of the life cycle of that technology. Whether it is the ability to deploy it day one and you want to run it with just basic functions like telemetry, visibility and observability. To then the ability to upgrade it, to turn on more sophisticated functions, whether those are policy driven models that you are trying to enforce or whether you want to build off of the telemetry functions and observability functions and you want to now have things more available to you at a flow by flow basis. So that's technology gives you the opportunity to embrace it with all of these being opt in models and depending on your sophistication as a customer and your appetite to embrace all the capabilities. It allows you the customer to think about at what stage do you want to turn on what level of functions at the day one we ensure that we can operate and give customers the value that is far more incremental to what they get today using the existing operational model and the existing tools. Thank you. Thank you. So at the foundation of our technology clearly is this P4 programmable processor. And I started this talk by telling you how our customers can, can consider us to be at least one generation, if not multiple generations ahead of the AWS Nitro technology. We then created benchmarks and test suites that can be easily replicated by our customers to demonstrate what does it mean in a quantifiable manner when we see a way are at least a generation, if not two generations ahead of the AWS Nitro technology. We conducted benchmarks on multiple metrics. Latency and jitter, as we said earlier, is a very important element, particularly for applications at the edge, as 5G and IoT become very relevant for service providers and the cloud providers to deliver differentiated services around. Having a latency, which is an improvement of nine times more than the AWS Nitro is a key attribute that allows us the opportunity to not only become optimized for the edge, but when you combine that with our ability to deal with up to eight times the number of packets per second in our technology, it gives us the power of the end where we have the ability to process a lot of packets per second at very low latency and at a very predictably low jitter. Making our cloud customers and our enterprise customers, giving them the opportunity to maximize on the performance for their SLAs for their applications, as well as for cloud providers, the opportunity now to deal with many, many more customers, giving them the opportunity to have increased revenue per rack. At the same time, the power utilization of our product, if we believe, is one third that of AWS. Today, AWS, by their own presentations, require five Nitro devices to offer equivalent level of services compared to the distributed services card. Today, we have measured performance of sub 30 watts at 100 gig with all of these services turned on. Whereas we believe that the AWS implementation would need to draw about 100 watts, assuming 20 watts per Nitro, making us the giving us the opportunity to deliver far more density per rack because we draw one third the power. At the end of it, it is really the power of this platform combined with the power of our software that will allow us to continue to deliver best in class cost, scale and performance and staying on the 18 to 24 month regimen on delivering our next generation product and platform, which continues to be on track, we continue to maintain this lead over the competition.